What is optogenetics and how is it revolutionizing neuroscience as we know it? Stay tuned. Hey everybody, today we're talking about how optogenetics works and how it has been an important tool for neuroscience. Special shout out to longtime subscriber Camille for the topic of today's video. If you've got something you want to hear about, leave a comment. Optogenetics is a technique in which neurons are modified so that they can be turned on and off by simply shining a light on them. Sounds impressive, but how? Now, I'm sure you've seen our video on how neurons work. You have seen it, haven't you? So you know that neurons send action potentials by opening and closing little valves called ion channels that let charged particles, or ions, move in and out of the cell. As ions move, they create a change in the electrical charge or potential of the cell. In animals, these ion channels are usually voltage gated, such that when the electrical charge or voltage reaches a certain point, it causes the channels to open. When one channel opens, it causes a change in potential which can cause another voltage gated ion channel farther down the axon to open and therefore causes a chain of electrical impulses that move down the axon of the neuron. Now this allows the cell to send information to other neurons in far away places. I know you remember our video on scotopic vision too, in which we described how a pigment called rhodopsin has the ability to change shape when exposed to light. If you haven't seen that, it's okay, but you're really missing out if you aren't subscribed. This is cool stuff. Hit the like buttons. Anyway, it turns out that some kinds of algae have ion channels that can be opened by exposure to certain wavelengths of light. For example, blue light, which allows the ions to flow across a membrane. If you could harness the power of this ion channel and somehow transplant it into a neuron, you could activate that neuron by shining a light on it. And as it turns out, this isn't all that hard to do. Since the ion channel is built by processes in the cell from reading the genetic code, you simply take the part of the DNA that codes for the light-gated channel and insert it into, say, a developing mouse's genetic code. And when the animal grows up, you have a transgenic mouse that has these light-gated receptors in its neurons. A newer technique allows the insertion of the genetic code using specially treated viruses, which can insert the ion channel DNA into animal cells at any age and in specific target brain areas. Now, once the body starts reading the DNA and building the light gated ion channels, now you can shine a light on the target neuron and it will generate action potentials. Using very fine fiber optics, you can activate a single neuron at a time or activate several at once and see how that impacts their behavior. The power to turn single neurons on and off at a whim by shining colored light on them is one of the most important discoveries of the past two decades. As a side note, the 2005 paper that was the first to successfully describe and use this technique was rejected by both science and nature, widely regarded as the top two most influential science journals. It did get published in a great journal, and since then it has been cited 4,478 times, which just goes to show that science and nature aren't the be-all, end-all. Boy, they really screwed the pooch on that one. Since its original conception, optogenetics has been expanded to use many different colors of light, but also expanded to do things like silence neurons that otherwise would be active. They've been used in animal organisms like worms and flies, zebrafish, rats and mice, and even non-human primates to help us understand the function of neurons and how they work together to produce behavior. All of that basic neuroscience is fun, but how can we apply this to be useful, you know, to people? Ugh, always with the applied stuff. Can't you see that this is amazing and interesting and has value even if it doesn't cure blindness or s reduce seizures and epilepsy? Where's your curiosity and sense of wonder? Okay, fine, we don't know all the ways optogenetics might have applied uses. After all, it is a new technique only being around for about the past 15, 16 years. But for starters, how about treating blindness and epilepsy? <laughs> epilepsy is a condition in which uncontrolled surges of brain activity spread throughout different areas of the brain. And it can be pretty serious, causing seizures and inability to control the body, among other things. Some types of seizures can be treated with drugs, but others are drug resistant and can only be treated by surgically removing the brain areas where the seizures start. 
Now, you may have heard of the famous patient HM who was unable to form new short-term memories. Well, that's what happened to him. Part of his hippocampus and surrounding cortex were removed to prevent his frequent seizures, which were disrupting his life. But there was a cost. The surgery had a dramatic consequences for his memory. Optogenetics may soon make surgeries like this obsolete. According to the most recent paper I could find on optogenetics and epilepsy, this is still in development as of 2020, but animal models have shown promise for using optogenetics to silence the problem neurons simply by pushing a button as soon as the seizure starts. Now there are still some challenges to overcome before clinical trials are possible, but I won't be surprised if this is right around the corner. Okay, what about blindness? Just this past month, a new paper was published in which a man with a certain type of blindness called retinitis pigmentosa, or RP, was treated using optogenetic vision restoration. In RP, over time you lose your specialized rod and cone cells in the retina of your eye that you need in order to turn light into neural signals. Now, doctors were able to inject virus into the eye, this is a good virus, because it's carrying the DNA for light-gated ion channels. Those light-gated ion channels became expressed in other cells in the retina that are unaffected by the disorder. Then, he wore special goggles that turned the visual scene in front of him into colored light signals needed to activate the ion channels. While he was wearing the goggles, his vision was partially restored, such that he could find, count, and touch different objects that otherwise he wouldn't have been able to perceive. That's pretty cool stuff, and it's only the beginning. Optogenetics is a way of augmenting the function of a neuron, and now that we have the tool, we just need people to dream big about how it can be used. Okay, I hope that shined a light on what optogenetics is and how it's used and what the potential impact is for the future. If you like this video, there's a uh, thumbs up button actually that you can push to say thank you. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our other cool videos that we're working on and until next time, keep thinking. All right, we need ideas. Let's come up with some optogenetics ideas. Uh, block the memory of what I saw my uncle post on Facebook. Uh, how about make everything taste like bacon? Charge advertisers extra to send signals straight to my brain. Ooh, how about automatic reminders downloaded straight to your brain? <laughs>